Hey everybody, it's Helen and Toby. Hi everyone. So we're gonna wait and just wait for everyone to kind of come on. We kind of came on a little early, uh, uh, just so that we were ready and weren't uh, coming in late because no one likes anyone who's late, right? No, no. that's why no one likes me because I'm always late. <laughs> You are not. You are you are the most on time early person I know. If well, anyone's late, that's me. I'm, I'm the massively late one. <laughs> my friends say that I would be late to my own funeral if I. <laughs> that's what they've decided. I will be late to my own funeral. I'm like, well, that's kind of like you know, I don't know, <laughs> not, not really positive. <laughs> but you're what? You're dead though, so who cares? Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's that right. Point. That's right. That's everybody else's problem. <laughs> I can be late to my own funeral. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm really like excited about what we're going to be talking about today, Helen. Yeah, you know? me too. Yeah, me too. Um, our topic is something that I think that can be expanded into this really bigger idea of just what it means to be healthy and what it means to be a mom and kind of how to... Uh, how we want to live and show our kids uh, kind of this yeah. healthy lifestyle. So oh, look, I think it's we got a, a, big we got topic. a bunch of people on. So let's get hey, started. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the BoobTube episode 11, big oh, 11. One, 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 one. Yeah. We're going to be talking about something that really a lot of people don't talk about today, Helen. You know, tell everybody what our topic's going to be about. So today our topic is exercise and breastfeeding. We are going to talk about some concerns, really common concerns that moms have about when they start exercising, um, if you're still breastfeeding, and just kind of that pressure to lose the baby weight, how to do it in a healthy way, right. and how to kind of, again, support each other as we're going through this journey. And I think the biggest thing that is a concern for a breastfeeding mom when you're talking about exercising is, mm -hmm. you know, they've already decided that they're going to breastfeed, and that in itself is a very exciting journey and a priority. Mm -hmm. And now we also have the concept of, I want to try to eat better. I want to try to lose some weight. And that becomes a priority. And how do we do both without losing the first one, which is our breast milk? Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about is, today. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's such a great topic. And I just want to dive in. <laughs> just... Let's dive in. So the first thing we have to talk about is, if I exercise, am I mm -hmm. going to affect my breast milk supply? I think that's the biggest thing that anyone would want to know right away. Mm-hmm. Well, research shows that really anything that causes stress in your life can affect your milk supply. So it really depends on your attitude about exercise. Is it something that you're going to enjoy, something that's going to relieve stress? Or is it one of those things that you have to do that you're going to kind of put this additional pressure on yourself to work out for an hour each day and you got to do your insanity or do your pylos or whatever. And then it's going to be this extra stress in your life. So it right, really it depends on your the, attitude. The jumping, jumping, jumping. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to make always, of course, anything we add into our lives, we want it to be something that um, doesn't add stress into our lives, but kind of adds more happiness and joy. And there's a reason why we're doing it. That's a positive reason. Yeah. And I think it's a, an individual choice. You know, we're all mm -hmm. about, you know, mom's choices, mom's journeys. For some moms, the working out is going to be something that's important to them. And we're mm -hmm. here to support that. And for other moms, it's like, you know, I'll get to it when I get to it. Right. And, and that's totally <laughs> fine, too. That's totally fine, too. I had to work out um, for when I was breastfeeding because, of course, I had to go back to work at the fire department. Not mm -hmm. that it was, you know, something I was really wanting to do, but it definitely <laughs> was something that I had to do. So I uh -huh. feel like my working out probably journey was a little bit more stressful. Mm -hmm. um, so there was some, you know, some ups and downs with my breast milk because of that. But like you said, it's something that can also help moms because mm -hmm. it can be relieving stress. It can give them a little bit of a moment away from the baby sometimes, some me right. time, which I think is mm -hmm. also good too. Yeah. I just want to take a really quick moment and welcome some of the people that have just dropped in. Elizabeth from One Ounce at a Time. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we Elizabeth. We have uh, Christy from Breastfeeding Mama Talk. And hello, Belly hey, to Christy. Breast. <laughs> yes. Well, let's get right down to it. I mean, obviously, when we're exercising, that is a positive. That is a benefit. But it is something where you also have to eat. You know, you have to eat the right way. Are there some mm -hmm. foods that maybe mom should focus on when they're wanting to breastfeed as well as exercise? Mm-hmm. Well, anytime we're looking at foods that support milk supply, it's really foods that have a low glycemic index and kind of stick in your ribs 
you know how your grandma used to tell you like eat your oatmeal it'll stick with it'll stick with your ribs and stay with you for a long time and that's true it's a whole grain it takes a lot of time to digest and we know that anything that regulates your blood sugar and sticks with you for a long time is going to help your milk supply as well so oatmeal you know mm -hmm. those oatmeal cookies have you ever tried milk makers they're awesome they have a great oatmeal cookie recipe oh yeah those um, are great and then you can taste them too which i love yeah um also hummus you know any of the legumes that have again that low glycemic index that's going to stick with us for a long time right also our healthy fats so salmon and tuna when we were pregnant a lot of us stayed away from some of the fish options right, right because we were worried about the mercury right and, and now that's something you want to actually include into into your diet back in which yay yay for tuna, right. yay for salmon <laughs> Right. And, you know, these are so important and they have this really hidden benefit, which is really cool because when as moms, when we are eating these fatty, these omega fatty acids that we get from fish, it goes yeah. right into our breast milk. So there are some supplements that moms take or even formula that advertises that it has DHA and some of these other fatty acids. Well, the fact is a fatty that's acid that's created in a lab, an artificial fatty acid, we don't even know if babies can absorb those into their immature gut. But we know that as moms, the omega-3 fatty acids that we eat in our fish goes right into our baby uh, through our breast milk. Now, I know we need to um, eat more calories when we're breastfeeding. Um, mm -hmm. is, there, is there studies out there that actually tell us maybe how much more calories? Because that was something that I originally, when I was doing it, I really didn't know how much more. I just kind of knew I could eat a lot more. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. a great thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know there's like a number. I think it's like 600, right? Isn't there like 600 calories more? Correct. So research shows that a breastfeeding mom that's exclusively breastfeeding needs about an extra 600 calories per day. So be sure that you're thinking about that as you're adding in calories. You're not, I mean, I could add a peanut butter parfait and that's 600 calories right there. Hey, <laughs> but hey. So basically you're telling us we can't add chocolate cake. Yeah, not for a, 600 not. calories. Correct. Let's try to keep it to those whole grains um, and those good protein, good proteins. That's right. And I see some uh, Christy, you're allergic to seafood. That's a bummer. There's other places to get those omega three fatty acids like nuts, almonds, cashews, walnuts. Those are all, all great alternatives to seafood as well. And, you know, definitely eating good proteins mm -hmm. and not trying to stick away from the simple sugars mm -hmm. and maybe all the carbs if you're trying mm -hmm. to eat better eat more healthy, lose some weight, mm -hmm. breastfeed. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my gosh, how many more, how many more things do I need to juggle in the head? Is, is that <laughs> you just want to eat more of those proteins. And that could be definitely chicken and your lean meats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So just all those things that we kind of know we should be eating. Um, yeah. Breastfeeding is kind we of We all that. know it. <laughs> we all know it. Do we do it? Uh, uh, but we all know it. Yeah, I like breastfeeding. cake option. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> I know. I, I don't think there's there's no omega threes in chocolate cake. Darn it. Sorry. Darn it. <laughs> but really think about breastfeeding as a time when you truly are eating for two. I mean, right when we're pregnant, we we are eating for two then as well. But remember how breast milk is made that the nutrients that we eat get absorbed through our small intestine into our blood, and then that blood That's is what our best. milk is made from. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the more good stuff we put in our body, um, the more it's going to transfer into our milk. However, 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 Here's if you however. eat McDonald's every day, if you eat Taco Bell every day, your breast milk is still going to be very, very nutritious. So remember that our bodies always feed our babies first, and then we get kind of the leftovers. So um, it, there's no there special... There's no special diet for breastfeeding. Just keep Isn't that in mind. Isn't there something really, really funny? Um, I think there was something that I read, um, and I remember us talking about it, where women said that every time they had a baby or every time they were pregnant, they lost a tooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's probably because the body was basically take If they weren't eating healthy, this is a long time ago, they weren't eating healthy, they didn't have good nutrition, the body is still going to give that good nutrition to the baby. So yeah. unfortunately, it pulls that nutrition away from the mom. Now, right. I bet there's some moms that worry that um, when they're breastfeeding, even if they're not eating the best, are they pulling mm -hmm. that nutrition from themselves? Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about that. We talked about it yeah. does, but it doesn't at the same time. Exactly. 
Exactly. So we know that our bones and our teeth and everything, they're kind of like a bank account for our, for all the minerals that our body needs. And what's really cool is that if we're deficient in some of these minerals, that our body will kind of take out some of our deposits and use that to, you know, our bo- help our bodies function better. And yeah. so with breastfeeding, that's exactly what happens. If you're not eating enough, of certain nutrients, then your body's going to take it from your bones and from your teeth and put it in your breast milk. And the really cool thing is we know that that temporarily depletes our bone uh, mineral stores. But after we stop breastfeeding, it goes right back and our bodies replace it. So it's really cool. I mean, we're just miracles. We are walking (laughs) miracles. All you mamas out there that are watching this, we are walking Mm -hmm. miracles. Just, just, Just feel important about that. We right. should have a card. We should have a card. <laughs> but the other thing I want to talk about, so we've talked about a little bit of food, but I want to talk about water because mm-hmm. we all know that water plays a, a very key role in mm-hmm. breast milk production. And I noticed whenever I was working at the fire department, you know, when I was breastfeeding and pumping, definitely on the days that I was at work, mm-hmm. um, obviously I was fighting fire. For those that don't really know me, I, I work for the fire department. I'm a firefighter paramedic. And I, when I fought a fire, I got very dehydrated and mm-hmm. I just really couldn't consume as much water as I'd like to. So I would be a little bit deficient in my breast milk that day. So if we're going to start working out, we have to kind of think about the fact that we want to make sure we're consuming enough water to mm-hmm. help that along and not mm-hmm. get in the way. Right. That is a really good point. And again, we kind of go back to our bodies are going to take what they need from us. We need to be sure we're giving our body, what it needs to, to make enough milk to keep our baby exclusively breastfeeding and kind of keep up with their needs. Yeah. So that's and really there's something that I wanted to uh, let everybody know. There's actually <laughs> being prepared also mm-hmm. in knowing that if you're thinking you want to, and this is going to help the moms that are not working out in breastfeeding yet, but maybe they're thinking mm-hmm. about it and they want to be prepared for the possibility. There's also supplements that you can take that can help mm-hmm. to increase your breast milk supply along with eating right and along with drinking a lot of water. And at Milky's, we actually, at Fairhaven Milky's, we actually have some products. And I want to do a giveaway. (laughs) We have to give some stuff away. We got to give stuff. And this is going to be to everyone who's watching our show right now and Mm -hmm. are doing wonderful comments that we love those comments. Thank you so much. And if we don't answer your comments in the show, we'll go back and we'll answer them later just We'll, we'll type your comments. So yes. please don't think that we're ignoring you. I'm looking at all these great comments. Carla, Nicole, Ashley, and Christy, thank you so much. And um, we'll definitely uh, go back and, and answer your questions about weaning and all these other things. Yes, but keep those comments coming because we are going to be choosing winners of some of our products that we're giving away today from those comments. So the first one, what we're going to give away first, Helen? So the first thing we're going to give away is Milky's Nursing Blend. And this is a great product because it has all the nutritional support that moms need. This is kind of a, this is a postnatal supplement. So it's after your baby's born. That's when you would start taking this. And it has extra vitamin D so that we can have a sufficient amount of vitamin D. And that vitamin D will go to our baby and our breast milk. Extra B vitamins for energy. And then this one also has fenugreek which is the classic galactagogue, the herb for increasing milk supply. And a lot of people have asked me like, well, how does fenugreek work or does it even work? And we know that research has shown that fenugreek helps to balance out your insulin. And we know that if we can balance out insulin, we know Mm -hmm. that we have the ability to help increase breast milk supply. I know I did a lot of fenugreek uh, when Mm -hmm. I was breastfeeding. And I mean, I think I was eating so much fenugreek that I was... (laughs) I was burping fenugreek and it was pretty disgusting. (laughs) I wasn't a big fan of that. But the one great thing that I think Fairhaven has done, Milky's has done, is that Mm -hmm. they've actually made our fenugreek stronger in the Mm -hmm. nursing blend, right? Right, exactly. So this has two types of fenugreek. It has the seed extract and it also has the, uh, the regular seed. And it's important because we get two types of fenugreek. And so we have fewer pills. This is three pills per day would be the serving and it's 1300 milligrams, which is a great amount. Yeah. So you're not great having to like to eat, 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 eat pills, mm-hmm. which, you know, who wants to do that? That completely sucks. So that's something that moms can really think about when they're thinking about, um, 
breastfeeding and wanting to work out, drink, you know, we have to be prepared. If you want to go in and do something and be successful, Mm -hmm. I think the best way to do it is to try to have a lot of things and know, and know what you're going to be doing and be prepared Mm -hmm. a little bit. So drinking water, Mm -hmm. eating right, and maybe even doing some supplements. And it's not just fenugreek. There's actually a lot of other supplements that are out there that actually Mm -hmm. improve breast milk supply. Um, so if fenugreek doesn't work for you, if it's something that irritates your stomach, because we do know that it can do that, uh-huh. there's something else that we have, which is another giveaway that we're going to uh-huh. do. So three lucky winners are going to win two things, and that's our nursing time tea, uh-huh. which is amazing because it has a lot uh-huh. of different herbs in there besides fenugreek. You want to list uh-huh. them off, Helen? Uh-huh. So we have blessed thistle, go through, alfalfa, anise, and uh, fennel as well. And I saw your question in there, Christy, about how um, nursing time tea, the fennel that moms consume in the tea can go through the breast milk and be soothing for baby's tummies. So it's another even benefit. So if Mm -hmm. fenugreek is not something that you want to do, you have the Mm -hmm. ability to increase your breast milk supply with your nursing time tea. And actually, unlike other teas on the market, ours doesn't taste like black licorice, (laughs) which is not something I'm picking up. So keep those comments going. We just wanted to take a second to let you guys know we're giving away some products on Mm -hmm. our live today. And we're going to be giving away both the nursing, the nursing time tea and the nursing blend. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back. Wait, I have to address really quick. So Sarah had a comment here and I really want to address this, Sarah, because I think it's really important that whenever we talk about increasing milk supply, we always want to first be sure that we're emptying the breast thoroughly and frequently. And I think, I really thank you for your comment because that's always going to be, you know, the, the dictator of milk thing. supply. Yep. Most definitely. So thank you for that. It's a cause and effect. So if you're not pumping, if you're not breastfeeding, mm-hmm. then you're not increasing your breast milk supply. And we've talked about that on some of our other lives. Also. Yeah. So I know if you guys are loving watching that, please go back and look at some of our other ones. I, I think we've, uh, you know, grown more beautiful as we've, as we've gone. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> but... <laughs> Okay, so let's get back to talking about exercise. Okay. So we're, we're going to eat good. We're going to definitely mm-hmm. do um, drink more water. If we right. need to, we might be doing some supplements. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of like exercises? I mean, do we have to, you know, we're moms and mm-hmm. we're like gung ho and we're like, I'm going to do it all. Super woman, right. man, woman, <laughs> you know, but sometimes it could be something as simple as, you know, you don't have to start off crazy. You could just start off walking, mm-hmm. you know, you right. can take baby steps. Walking is a great place to start. It engages our core and gets our upper body moving as well. So I live in Oregon. Toby lives in Florida. So um, <laughs> it's year round for me. I can go walking year round. Yeah, she can go walking outside. Today actually isn't a bad day. I could go walking outside. But we know that a lot of the country is kind of dealing with a lot of frigid weather right now. So there might be some limitations to those of us that want to walk outside and take our baby out in a stroller. So that's something to think about when you're planning your, you know, what is my exercise going to look like? I'd really like to walk, but is that really an option for me, like this time of year and where I live? Um, It can be really nice to walk with a friend. Uh, One thing that I like to um, ask moms about is, do you like to exercise with your baby or do you like to kind of have that time to yourself? So there's some options like stroller strides and baby yoga. Um, have any of you tried any of these classes and would you recommend them? Did you like oh, working yeah. out with your baby? Cause we're all about, you know, sharing and talking about some of the things that maybe not everybody talks about. It definitely uh-huh. this working out and breastfeeding is something I really don't think is publicly talked about. Yes. Working uh-huh. out, losing weight, but not doing both. And I uh-huh. think that's one of the great things that we're doing today is we're wanting moms to share their success stories, but uh-huh. also something to think about is that, you know, we learn from our mistakes and mm-hmm. I think sharing the things that maybe you thought didn't work for you would be really mm-hmm. beneficial to another mom out here who's thinking about it. And mm-hmm. again, it's not something that we're saying you have to do. We're saying if it's important to you, we want to mm-hmm. make sure that you are on the right path. And if it's something mm-hmm. you could care completely less about, then, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Exactly. <laughs> um, it has to be something is that... A thing. Weightlifting well, is a thing that a lot something... of people talk about. Yeah. Is it positive? Is it going to help you with your stress level or is it going to be another thing for you to worry about? So just really think of it that way. And we need to think about the type of bra as well. I mean, those of us that didn't go through life with a lot of breast tissue, like myself. Wow. Uh, you mean, yeah. I, I had to be a little, 
I have to be Hillary really can knock herself out. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get a concussion if I don't like strap those babies in. You know, right. that's a good question. I bet, I bet you a lot of moms worry that if they're wearing a bra that is, um, you know, is, it, is that going to affect their breast milk supply mm-hmm. if they're wearing the wrong kind of bra? Mm-hmm. Well, it can if you're putting a lot of pressure on your breast for an extended period of time. So maybe you you work out and then you go grocery shopping and you do all these other errands and you've got this bra that's really putting a lot of pressure on your breasts. There's a chance that you could in, you know, over over days or weeks um, impact your milk supply that way. So just be cognizant of I want something that gives me the great support. But if it really is giving you a lot of support, like if you're a runner and you really want something that is holding you in, um, think about when I'm done working out, I'm probably going to change into something else. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't wear that too long. You know, I mean, I definitely think I'm I'm excited that we're talking about this. And um, I definitely love that um, moms are sharing their stories, their Mm -hmm. successes that they did. Um, Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the uh, baby yoga. I didn't ever do that with mine. I kind of was somebody who enjoyed kind of working out without Mm -hmm. um, my baby. And, you know, it was nice to be able to get away, especially um, my oldest, because she was having a lot of colic. So Mm -hmm. it was like some time to myself. And I did have some, I did have Mm -hmm. some guilt feelings with that. And I just want to let moms know that, you know, you're not alone. If you feel that Mm -hmm. way, it's, it's okay to feel that way, but know that it, it's also good to have that moment alone and that you're not the only one who feels guilty for that, but keep doing it. If it makes you feel good when you're going to do it. Yeah. I think that's a great point that as moms, we usually put others first all the time and we really need, yeah. And we really need to care for ourselves and so that we can have something to um, some energy and some mental energy really to care for others, you know, like, like we want to do it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really fun, I'm glad that we're sharing this, and um, I'm glad, I love seeing everyone's stories that are coming up with that. Great suggestions. Love those. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to talk, I think Erica had a great comment there, where she's talking about losing her baby weight to go back to work. Um, I'd like to hear, I guess, from other moms, like Toby and I, who went back to work, and definitely were not at our baby weight. I know that I wasn't back to my baby weight for quite a while um, after we went to work, but as a nurse, we kind of get to wear pajamas to work. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't quite so bad as someone that works in an office and you have to wear professional clothes that maybe aren't, you know, don't have the drawstring waist <laughs> that scrubs have. <laughs> so, um, Erica, I think you have a, I think you have a really common concern that you probably have this wardrobe of professional clothing that you bought before you had a baby and you don't want to go out and buy all new clothes again. So, you know, some things that you can do to make that work is really do a lot of leggings. Um, <laughs> leggings this are, time of leggings year, are a wonderful thing. Leggings are a wonderful thing. This time of year, the long sweaters are really great. And just know for yourself that breastfeeding isn't going to last forever. Having a little baby isn't going to last forever. And there'll be time when you can refocus on some other things um, outside of your baby. But a lot of times we need to really look at what are our priorities, especially in the short term? And, um, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Really give yourself that permission to lose your weight slowly and in a healthy yes. way that doesn't sabotage your energy and your mental health. So go for the leggings, Erica. <laughs> yeah, my bunker gear kind of hid everything. I, I look like yeah. a big puffball anyway. So <laughs> I had a little fill in of the puffball. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think it's just whatever works for what, whatever mom, whatever you're doing, you know, whatever works Mm -hmm. for you, whatever makes you feel good. Definitely. I think yoga is a good one that I think Mm -hmm. will help moms because I think it concentrates more on, on strengthening those muscles. And when you strengthen muscles, you actually burn more calories when you're just sitting down and resting. So Mm -hmm. if, um, like if you're living in a cold area and you can't actually go out and do some cardio, remember that doing a little bit of weight training that you could do at home or inside of a gym, when you, when you build muscle, you actually, it takes more calories to operate Mm -hmm. those muscles. So that's another option that moms can think about. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And another thing that we should talk about too is, remember, we need to take care of our bodies for the long term. We don't just want to be healthy moms. We want to be healthy grandmas too in many years down the road. (laughs) 
<laughs> you are saying a dirty word, Grandma. I really, really careful. Hey, careful. We're gonna get there someday. Careful. We all are gonna get there. And so the best thing we can do is really just think about our our bodies as being in this marathon that we need to care for ourselves throughout the years. And one thing as a mom that we can do is be sure that we're getting the right nutritional support while we're breastfeeding. We're taking a postnatal vitamin like nursing blend. We are giving ourselves the calories and other nutrition that we need and that we're staying active because we know that women and men that stay active over the years, then when we get into our later years, we continue to be active. It's like a a use it or lose it. And I want to be a grandma that is on the floor playing Legos with my grandkids and <laughs> telling them, come on, you guys, keep up with Granny here. Oh, you got to look. Come on, you guys, <laughs> keep up with Granny. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And I think being a mom, one of the great things about being a mom is it really changes mm-hmm. how you think about the world and how you mm-hmm. are wanting to raise your child. Is that mm-hmm. all of a sudden now you kind of think about what you're putting into your body when you didn't really mm-hmm. think about that before. So Mm -hmm. that's one of the great things about being a mom and being a breastfeeding mom is that it kind of changes your outlook on life, on what you want to do. And it could completely go in a different direction, which I think Mm -hmm. is amazing and healthy. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. I also wanted to let everyone know that we have a bunch of amazing products um, besides the two that we're giving away. We have uh, several breastfeeding uh, collection, storage. We have a lot of products on our mymilkies.com and all of those are actually at 10% off. You actually get a coupon code that you can use from this live that you're watching. It's called FB Live. Mm-hmm. And I think Helen's going to put that up there for everyone to see. So there's actually other products if you want to go visit that that you can get more discounts from. If you guys love what we're talking about, if you love the blue tube, please share because we're definitely trying to... Um, we're two moms that have, uh, we want to share amazing stories of not just ourselves, but of other moms that are out there. We're all about encouragement mm-hmm. and we're all about knowing that everybody has different journeys and we are here to help share your stories, our stories and support your journey. So mm-hmm. if you love our Facebook lives, please share it so that more moms can, can find out about us and come visit and hang out and we can all talk because it's really fun. <laughs> it is really fun. And I'm really excited about all of the comments about baby yoga and like kind of these group exercise classes with our babies. Those are really fun because not only do we get to work out with our babies and get to make ourselves healthy, but we get that those really great connections that can last a lifetime that you're kind of in this setting with other moms that are at the same phase of their lives. And those connections are really going to last. So I think those are really exciting. And I love seeing those in the comments about the baby yoga classes and the baby wearing Uh, with the dads and moms. Uh, I think babies, yeah, babies are heavy enough to lift and (laughs) get a workout from. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it definitely can be something, and I think your baby would be loving it when you're doing that. So, I mean, it's it's a good start. Remember, we talk about it's baby steps. You don't have to necessarily start doing insanity, you know, right away. I mean, you can, you can work your way into that. I I think I attempted insanity and I said, oh, no, no, stop, stop, no, no. But yeah, so I really had a great time talking with everybody. I think we've uh, talked about a lot of things. We've shared some great things. And we're going to go on and start uh, commenting on everybody's comments. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming. We love you guys. All right. Thanks. Have a great Wednesday. Yeah.